Well, good day viewers. Today we have this 2015 GMC Sierra. You can probably hear it. It's got a significant ticking noise in the engine. Check engine light is on. The customer is complaining about running rough, stumbling. I believe they said the check engine light was flashing at one point. I just brought it in. It's pretty, pretty cold. Let's have a look at what we come up with for codes and the history on this vehicle. So let's scan it. Let's see what codes it's got to re reveal. It's got 217,000 kilometers on it. And let's do a network code scan. I predict it's going to have a misfire code. Fuel from Rich Bank 1. Engine misfire detected. Knock sensor module performance. Well, maybe it's hearing that detonate or that no noise. Invalid data received from engine control module, so the ABS doesn't like the codes in the engine control module. Uh, low voltage in the radio. Uh, that was, yeah, that was in the radio. Well, we're just about at the end. That's the end. So this thing has had a set of injectors put in it. And the intake valve walnut shell cleaned. Let's have a look at the history on this thing. Let's look at the vehicle report. Yeah, quite a bit of history on this thing. Injector flow tests, injectors were replaced. So this is the system report from today. There's the system report from, looks like March, March 29, 21, let's see. I remember doing a set of injectors in this thing, which was a pain, at 204,000, March 29, misfire. Field trim bank two. And what do we have now? I think it was bank one, wasn't it? Bank one. Field trim 172 bank one. Field trim system rich. B0300 engine misfire detected. 0324 NOx sensor circuit module performance. Well, let's have a look at uh, at misfire counters and see if it is a random misfire P0300. No, nope. on the OBD2 side of it has a P0304. But on the why isn't this scrolling? Well, let's go back in here and look at it. Engine data display, misfire data. Misfire history on cylinder four, 37,883. Cylinder four is on bank two, though. Eight misfires on cylinder eight. Two misfires on cylinder six. Well, I'm going to have a look at some freeze frame data. Let's see what was going on. Codes menu, freeze frame. 
and see if it can tell us what was going on. Misfire detected. Let's have a look at that freeze frame data. Too bad it won't have misfire counters in it. Let's see what the fuel trim is. Short term on bank one is negative three, and long term is, is positive five. Fuel trims were normal, reasonably normal on both banks when that happened. Was it even in closed loop though? Engine speed 2114 RPM, coolant temperature 46 Celsius, so it wasn't up the temperature, and it was in closed loop. Run time for five minutes. Well, that's not really much help. Everything looks reasonably accurate there. I'm going to save this. So I want to look at freeze frame data for P0172. Well, that sucks didn't record anything. Well, that's not very helpful. How about this P0324? Didn't record anything there either. Down. Well, let's have a look at what causes these codes to set. P0324 is knock sensor activity. I wonder if that noise has anything to do with it. Code tips P0324. Let's see if it's here. 24. This is the troubleshooter information in the snap-on scanner. Knock sensor enables end to control module to control ignition time for the best possible performance. Conditions for running. Engine speed between 400 and 8500 greater than two seconds, basically any time it's running. Conditions for setting the DTC. The ECM has detected an internal fault. What does that mean? Ignition timing is retarded to reduce the potential of engine damage, damaging spark knock. The ECM has determined detected an internal fault. If this DTC is set, then suspect the engine control module. Seriously? Verify none of the conditions listed below exist. Knock sensor or wiring harness damage. Incorrect knock sensor installation. Knock sensor engine mounting surface birds. Casting flash floor material. Close proximity of hoses, brackets, and engine wiring. Loose brackets, loose or broken accessory drive belts, brackets, components. And engine mechanical condition. Contaminated or poor quality fuel. Verify the scanner diameter parameters listed below while no display no while moving the related harnesses and connectors of the knock sensor. Cylinder two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, knock detected. Well, there's live data. I don't believe it has eight knock sensors, so it must be just sensing. Of course, it's quiet now. I should have checked this while it was running. The noise in the engine has quieted down. Mind you, it's loud in the shop now with the furnace running and the compressor running. I'm going to do a little research. So looking at the criteria for setting this P0324 knock sensor implausible signal basically says that uh, detects that either knock sensor signal performance is out of the normal calibrated range due to excessive engine knock or on a per cylinder basis. And if you look at the trouble shooting information, it says here an engine mechanical condition refer to symptoms engine mechanical. Well, it definitely has a noise in the engine now. If that's related or not, I don't know. Uh, looking at the freeze frame data that I recorded, which is right here. No, that ain't it. Hmm. 
Here it is. At the time that the set the P0300 code, it was running at 10 and a half degrees timing, but I can't tell individual cylinders because this data list doesn't contain that data. So I think I'm going to take it for a road test and uh, it doesn't explain the misfire on cylinder number four though. If I recall, it was the same bank that had the problem last time. Unless this mechanical noise is related to that right bank. Let's see if I can tell which side the engine noise is coming from. So it definitely sounds loudest from the passenger side. with a stethoscope that seems to be on the right side. I wonder if it has a damaged push rod, bent push rod or something. I had another one of these a few weeks ago and I believe it was number four or number six cylinder but I can't remember. I think number four cylinder is one of the displacement on demand cylinders too. So I pulled the right side valve cover off and have a look down here and see what we see here. That's a piece of a rock or a push rod there. This is basically the same as the other one I had. I think it was the same push rod actually, number four intake or number four exhaust. Wow. Well, this one's not broken. This one's just bent, as you can see. But it was jammed in there and it was still pushing the rocker arm up and down. I didn't want to start it like that with the engine apart. So I got a push rod and valve cover gasket coming from the manufacturer, from the dealer. We're going to put in one push rod here and then start it up and have a look at the rest of the valves. So there it is running on four cylinders. You can hear it's a lot quieter now. Don't see any other abnormalities with any of the other rocker arms. So we're going to put the valve cover back on, new gasket see how it runs. So there's a new valve cover gasket with a little bit of silicone grease on it. Uh, the rocker arm bolt is 22 foot-pounds. Clean the gasket surface off and uh, it's recommended to put a new gasket. You could possibly reuse it. Well, there it is back together and running again. Sounds a lot quieter. No more ticking. Thank you, quiet. Cleared all the codes out of it to get for a road test and see how it runs. No more misfires counting. Nice and quiet. No active codes, I'm sure. I'm sure that that knock sensor code was caused by the rocker arm noise. Well, we're going to take it for a road test. So I just came back from the road test, truck runs beautiful, no ticking, no misfires, no misfire history. So for now I guess it's fixed, thanks for watching.